how would the Premier League look if every single player suddenly got released? Every player from the senior team all the way down to the under 18s all released and become a free agent. Who will go where? What club will dominate? Which club would surprise and which clubs would get relegated? Let's find out. So now, as you can see, we are in August 11th, 2023, the day before the season starts. The teams have had a few months to build their squad over the summer, and we will see just how different they look. We'll go through every single team, so if you want to skip to the section of your club or the clubs you're interested in too, just click down the bottom and skip through them. But obviously, we're going to go in alphabetical order, so we're starting off with Title Challenges Arsenal. Just before we look at all the teams, let me know in the comments what you would like to see in an FM experience. I'm open to basically doing anything. I'm an open-minded guy. But while you're down there, like and subscribe as well. I plan on doing a few more FM experiments, so yeah, expect some more down the line. And if you comment some ideas as well, I'll bloody do them as well. But let's look how this turned out. All right, an Arsenal. Wow, okay. They have definitely cooked this window. First player. Kevin De Bruyne, those stats are sexy. Kevin De Bruyne sides for Arsenal from Manchester City, and it's not the only Manchester City player. Erling Haaland, the best striker in the league. I mean, Arsenal already set up to win. They've already set up, and they've got Virgil, the best centre-back in the league. I mean, this, they can't not win it. They can't not win it already. I'm convinced. They've got Allison as well. I mean, in my opinion, the best keeper in the league as well when he doesn't want to be injured. Unbelievable team so far. Kyle Walker, probably the best right back. <laughs> okay. Arsenal are not playing around. They've also got Phil Foden. Jesus Christ. Okay, this team is actually insane. Phil Foden, Varane, who's, you know, decent. Yao Cancelo as well. So obviously all the loan players that are out on loan have obviously been released as well. Thiago, if he wants to stay fit, then he'll be a good player to have. Julian Alvarez. Okay, they've stolen like all of Man City's players at this point. Casemiro, Tonelli as well, Paulinia. I mean, these are some really good players. Luke Shaw as well is a good one. Madison, what? The okay, this team's actually insane. Zabozlai as well. Kanate, Alise. Oh my God. Okay, this team's actually insane. I'm already convinced Arsenal are going to win the league, but we'll move on to the next team. There's a lot of star players. Aston Villa now have a few interesting players. Akanji from Manchester City as the most world reputation. Bruno, oh my god, his stats are disgusting. Holy shit. Kieran Trippier at right back. Oh my god, his stats are disgusting as well. Fucking hell. They've got the pace whore, Jeremy Doku. They've got Cunha as well from Wolves. Uh, Udogi, a good promising left back. Saar as well, I'm pretty sure, from Tottenham. Wesley Fofana, I mean, if he stays fit, he could be a good player. Oh, they've got Ian Matson, who plays for Dortmund now on loan from Chelsea, who's getting a lot of uh, hype at the current moment. Alex Scott, who's a former wonder kid and football manager. Visser as well, Danny Ward transferring. Oh, he's on loan here from who? From Leicester? Oh, fair enough. So it's not a bad team, I mean, but compared to the Arsenal team, it's, it's a massive, massive difference. Brentford have Zinchenko, their best player, the inverted left back. They've got Kurt Zuma, who kicks cats. Caicedo, who, I mean, is he the most expensive midfielder ever in the Premier League? I don't know, is he? I can't remember. He might be, though. Fuck, he was expensive. Fabio Vieira, who just does not play. Dominguez, who he signed in uh, Southampton FM series, who stayed for one season before he sold him. Eddie Nketiah, back up at Arsenal. Uh, Mario Lamina, the former Southampton man. This guy's cooking, isn't he? I'm pretty, oh my god, he's actually a decent little player here. He's cooking at uh, Nottingham Forest, off memory. But the only issue here is that they really don't have many players, and they only have a bad keeper. We're just going to say it how it is. A bad keeper. They've signed him from Dundalk for free. That team... Does not give me confidence. Brighton have signed Lukaku. How this guy's 18 finishing is beyond me. I'm just going to be honest with you. I just don't believe that for a second. Andrew Robertson, he's injured though. Out for five weeks. Onana, okay. Some decent little players here from Brighton. They've got Romero as well, who's a good centre back. How do you say this guy's name? Gray, Gray, something like that. They've got Basuma as well. They've got Rob Holding... Uh, the Wolves winger. I don't know. I'm not going to pronounce that. Kudos is a good player. Brandon Williams. Noni Medoweke. Okay. So Brighton have a pretty decent team. I'd put them above Villa. I'd put them above Villa in my opinion. Burnley. Okay. Richarlison. Finally at a club that is his level. Cere Cere Cerebia. Cerebia maybe. Oh, Decent stats. Decent stats. 
Uh, Alvarez, the defensive mid from West Ham. We've got Jared, Jared Bowen as well. He should have higher finishing, in my expert opinion. Lewis Dunk, the big man. Also, Harvey Elliott. Oh, oh his stats are really good. What the hell? We've got Matty Target, the former Saints man. Matty Target. But again, it looks like a lot of teams struggling to get keepers because this Randolph guy, I'm sorry to say, mate, he's 36 and he is not good enough to sign the Premier League. I'm sorry to say. Chelsea have a few decent signings, but again, it's not a very big squad. They're going to struggle with rotation. Rodri, the star man, the best defensive mid in the world, now plays for Chelsea. Edison, one of the best keepers in the league, with 20 kicking, not surprised. Ruben Diaz as well, another good player for Chelsea. That's three brilliant players from Manchester City. Lucas Acompas, they've signed him for 44 million. Fair enough. Hyungman Son goes to the London rivals, Chelsea, who's obviously a brilliant player. Nathan Ake, another Manchester City player. Okay, so they just got all the Man City players. Sucker! Oh, hello. This is an interesting one. Sucker to Chelsea. Okay, interesting stuff. Calvin Phillips. Kulosewski as well. He's got some decent stats. Calvert Lewin. Okay, okay. And Van Heckel. Or Van Heck, I should say. I mean, that's not a bad team. Again, it's just they don't have any, um, they don't have a bench, really. Oh, Palace. Isaac. That's a great signing. Joel Linton as well, the centre mid. Pedro Porro, who can't defend, but apparently is the best right back in the league. Jordan Pickford, good keeper. I mean, really, I think the difference in a lot of these clubs is whether they signed a good keeper or not, because we've seen a few clubs already not sign a good enough keeper, and we've seen some clubs sign, well, the best ones in the league. Lissandro Martinez, the butcher. Lavia, who's injured. <laughs> What a surprise. Out for 10 weeks as well. Wow, to Weghorst. That's a goal-scoring striker. Well, you got Isaac, so you don't really need him. Brendan Johnson from Spurs. Uh, this is from Arsenal, right? Yeah, the Arsenal left back or something. Callum McKenna. Oh, we signed him in the Southampton career. Fair enough. Everton, Cole Palmer. Cold Palmer, you could say. He has some really good stats, I'm not going to lie. Cole Palmer, you got Leandro Trossard, not bad. You've got Eric Dyer, the GOAT. Who is this guy? Cabrera? Oh, they've signed him from Espanol. I was going to say, I didn't, uh, didn't recognise his name. Tommy Yasu, oh, who can play both sides. Dean Henderson, that's a good keeper. That's a good keeper. Lakonga? Uh, yep, okay. Dennis, Undav, Sanchez. Oh, they've got two good keepers, actually. I mean, they've stolen one off their rivals here. And I don't know who any of those guys are, but not bad from Everton, not bad. Fulham, McAllister. Okay. That's a good start. Divock Origi on loan from AC Milan. Regulon, Tino Livramento, the former Saints man. He should have a bag of potential in this game. Solanke, I mean, he's having a great season in the Premier League. I don't really know half these players. I'll be honest, the only other player I know is um, Decore. And, oh no, they've got Eight Nori as well. Um, Kevin Sh Shad. Eight Nori, the left back from Wolves. That's not a bad squad for Fulham. Liverpool, they're fucked. They're fucked, I can guarantee it. That is not enough players. Nowhere near enough players to compete in this Premier League season. Bruno Fernandes at Liverpool. Marcus Rashford at Liverpool. Okay, Jaden Sancho at Liverpool. That's three Manchester United players who have moved to the Merseyside club. He's moved from Sporting for 32.5. They've obviously signed him from Napoli for 32 million. Kukurea as well. Klosterman. Okay, they've signed him from Leipzig. So they've decided, you know, there's plenty of players that I can get for free in the Premier League. Now nah, we'll just buy everyone. A young Portuguese left back and Oscar Kelly. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Oh, they re-signed him. Fair enough. That team is not filling me with confidence. I'm going to tell you right now. Luton Town, Garnacho. Okay, that is a quality signing from Luton Town. Ben Me, Tyreek Mitchell, who's out for two months. That is not good. Mepham, Billy Gilmore, Webster, Ollie McBurney, Adam Smith, O'Shea, Liz. Oi, the Southampton man. Okay, so they're fucked. They've got a shit keeper in goal. <laughs> they're screwed. That's about how it goes. But again, not enough players in the squad. Manchester City, here we go. Martin Odegaard, the Arsenal captain, now at Manchester City. And those are some naughty stats. Gabriel Jesus back at City from Arsenal again. Kingsley Coman signed for 74 million from Bayern. Okay. Mats Hummel signed from Dortmund for 5 mil. That's a great signing. I don't know who this guy is, Rodriguez. 70. How much fucking money are you spending, Man City? Jesus Christ. Reese James from obviously Chelsea. If he can stay fit, he'll be a good player. Sebastian. Co what? Bro. City. Sign some bloody players for free, mate. Ben Chilwell from Chelsea. Longley on loan from Barcelona. They've got Marcus Alonso on loan from Barca as well. 
Jason Steele was their keeper. I mean, that's not bad, actually. I don't know who this Horta guy is, but they've bought him again, 25 million. Solaire as well from PSG on loan and Bynes backup keeper or something. I mean, how much money are these guys spent? 200 million. What the fuck? All right, Manchester United. Oh, Christ. <laughs> that is not enough players, lads. That is not enough players. They bought Rabiot from Juventus for 54 million. Jack Grealish switches Manchester clubs. Gabriel Barbosa, 22.5 million from Flamingo. Zelensky, again, another bought, bought player. Mudrik from obviously Chelsea, Rico Henley, and Evan Ferguson's a great signing though. Massive potential on him. It seems though the Manchester clubs have decided to buy players rather than sign them for free, which is a little bit concerning. But again, that's not enough players. You don't even have a starting 11. I'm not wishing you good luck, Manchester United. I think you're fucked. Newcastle United. Ooh, okay, Newcastle. Bernardo Silva, obviously, brilliant player. Mo Salah. Probably the best right wing in the world. I'm surprised he I'm surprised he doesn't have as good better finishing, to be honest, with the amount of goals he scored, but he does miss a lot of chances as well, I guess. Raheem Sterling, Raheem the Dream at Newcastle, Luis Diaz at Newcastle as well. That is an unbelievable front furry, really. Well, obviously not one of them's gonna play striker. Diogo Costa from Porto, 64 million. Trent as well. Bro, Newcastle got a better team than Man City or Manchester United. That's crazy. William Saliba, that's a great signing as well. Enzo Fernandez, an expensive midfielder. How much they paid? 103 mil? Yeah, brilliant. Lorenzo, 42.5 million from Napoli. Mancini signed from Roma as well. For, so they did a little bit of a mixture. Now that's okay. Spend a lot of money, sign a few free agents. That's bloody good. Kepa as well. I mean, that's fine. And I don't know who that is, but I mean, they've got a decent keeper. That's a decent little team from Newcastle. Nottingham Forest, now they've signed a squad. Look at the depth of that. They've got obviously a great keeper, Martinez. That's a good start. Diogo Jota, that's a good player to have. Pau Torres, who's injured for seven weeks. That's unfortunate. Anthony Gordon as well, the winger. Concert, Johnny Evans. I don't know how to say that. I'm just going to call him Julio. Solly March, Lamptey. Yao Gomez, not bad signing. Jamal Lewis. They brought a lot of... Well, I was going to say younger players, but also got Johnny Evans, who's a bit of an old bloke. But, I mean, that's not a bad team. They're probably mid-table. Sheffield United have signed Harry Maguire. Wait, he used to play for Sheffield, didn't he? Hey, the full circle. He's back. Christian Norgard as well from Brentford. Matoma. Oh, that's a good player. 18 dribbling. Oh, that's disgusting. Shabala Ben... Bernada? Bernada? Yeah, I'm good at names. Moreno, Pinnock, and Hilson. You're going down. Yeah, going down, Sheffield. I'm confident about that. Tottenham Hotspur. They've signed Kuto from Genoa to... F oh, they've signed Kuto. Oh, he's a Manchester City player. I was confused for a second. He's a Manchester City player who was out on loan. Nkudu. Wait. Nku... Nkuku? Nkuku? Is that how you say it? I don't know. He's transferred uh, from Chelsea, of course. Uh, Tierney. I mean, he doesn't exist anymore. Gabriel Martinelli changes to Tottenham. David Ray as well, changes from Arsenal to, well, technically in real life, he's probably going to sign permanently at Arsenal, but you know what I mean. Gabriel as well, man, okay, so a lot of Arsenal players at Tottenham now, uh, I don't know who this is, but they've got him alone. John McGinn, fair enough. Oh, they've got Callagher as their keeper, is he going to be their starting keeper, is he? No, you've got David Ray, I'm bloody, I forgot about that. I mean, it's a decent little team, uh, McNeil as well, you've got Beto as well, who's done nothing at Everton, off memory. Not a bad team, not a bad team. West Ham, okay. Oh, Declan Rice. So we've got John Stones to West Ham. We've got Declan Rice returning to his boyhood club. Cody Gakpo, we've got Benjamin White. We've got Victor Lindoff. Darwin, Darwin Nunes. Top scorer, I can guarantee you. Vicario, okay, this team's pretty good. Simicus, Reese Nelson, Donny van der Beek, Lerma Onana, Ramsey Re Harrison Reed. Fair enough. I mean, that's actually a pretty good team. Wolves have got Nick Pope as a good keeper. Guardiol from Manchester City, a good young centre-back. Diaby from Aston Villa. Botman. James Milner, 37 and still going strong. Come on, he's not nine pace. Come on, he's a bit quicker than that, lads. He should have, honestly, 20 natural fitness and 20 stamina. This guy's insane. Royale, Ollie Watkins, that's a good player. Leon Bailey, Ross Barkley, Oliver Skip. I mean, that's not a bad team from Wolves. And that's the last team. Wolves are the last team. So now in the Premier League, let's see how they go. We're going to sim to the 1st of January. Now, obviously, there are still a lot of players that could be signed during the season. Obviously, Mason Mount's got a bid from Fulham and Everton. Party from Fulham. Obviously, got Kai Havertz, Coutinho, Thiago Silva, Kovacic, Eriksen, Jorginho, Perisic, De Gea, Callum Wilson, Matip. So many players. David De Gea has been offered by Luton. Okay. 
There's so many players that could be signed. Obviously, Nicholas Jackson, got Yuri Telemann. So many players that are still available to be signed. So obviously, they'll be signed um, as the season progresses. But there's a lot of good players that can easily help save some teams. James Ward Prowse, who's he wanted by Fulham? Fair enough. So there could be a lot of players that move on and help teams that sort of don't have enough players right now, which could change the landscape of the Premier League season. But we're going to sim to January, and we're going to see how it looks in around mid-season and see if there's any crazy shit. All right, so we are in January now, January 1st, and there are some interesting things happening in the Premier League. We'll start from the top. Ignore the bottom for now. Arsenal cooking. As expected, I predicted them to win it. I mean, their team is pretty disgusting. They lost to Nottingham Forest at home. That is the only team they've lost to this season, which is pretty impressive. The draws are coming against Chelsea, West Ham, and Newcastle, but they've dominated the rest of the competition. Newcastle sitting in second with Chelsea and Tottenham fighting for Champions League, but there's Burnley, there's West Ham, Manchester City, Nottingham Forest, Brentford. I mean, look at the gap. You've got, from probably Sheffield United, there's only a seven-point gap from them and fourth. I mean, the league is as tight as it can get, but let's go down a little bit. Let's go down to the bottom. Manchester United, seven points so far this season with two wins coming away from home at Wolves and Brentford and a draw coming home at Bournemouth. So one point at home for Manchester United this season. Luton, obviously, struggling. I mean, they've got... Oh, he's unhappy. Oh, Garnacho's unhappy. I mean, they filled out the squad quite a bit. We've got Hoiberg, got Castagno, we've got Elmeron. There's some good little players. David Brooks in there. So they filled out the team. We can look at Manchester United as well. They didn't. They've got, they've got Tom Huddleston... Um, uh, playing centre back. <laughs> Wait, do they have a keeper? They don't even have a keep. United, what are you doing? I'm guessing Eric Ten Hag is fucked off. Yeah, he got sacked pretty quickly. And so Antonio Conte is the new manager for Manchester United, and I doubt he's going to be able to turn it around. Maybe some signings in January could help, but the fact they have no keepers is embarrassing. Liverpool, on the other hand, Deserby is the new manager for Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp getting sacked, and he is unemployed now. The legend is gone. Did they fill out their squad a little bit? Not particularly. They got a few players like Renato Sanchez, but other than that, they haven't really improved the team all that much. Oh, they got a good keeper in, though, from Turkey. Not too bad. Got Everton in and around the relegation. Sean Dyche is still there. Fair enough. Oh, okay. They filled out their team a lot. Kai Havertz and now Douglas Louise. Okay. They've got, a, they've got actually a decent team now. They've definitely improved during the window. We can look at Arsenal, see if Arsenal improved anyone. Who else did they sign? Doesn't really look like they signed anyone else of any quality now. Nah, they didn't look like they did. Newcastle's team obviously is very good. They don't look like they've really signed anyone as well. So not too many signings are done. Mo Salah leads the league in terms of goals with Jared Bowen slightly behind. Bernardo Silva in third as well. Saka currently the best player in the league with the average rating of 7.66. Five goals, five assists, 19 games. So Sarabia, Sarabia, fuck, I can't pronounce his name, 7.4 average, highest assist in the league with 9 and 18, not bad so far, so it looks like Arsenal are going to win the league, but will Liverpool and Manchester United get relegated, we'll find out as we sim to the end of the season and see what else happens, also, as a Southampton man, Ralph Hassan was back in the Premier League with Fulham, so that's interesting as well, but let's sim uh, to the end of the season now, after I added that in. And as the Premier League season has come to an end, this is how it ends with Arsenal getting 94 points of only two losses, with Villa being the second one. Chelsea, Newcastle and Tottenham all get into the Champions League, with Manchester City into the Europa League, Burnley and potentially West Ham being uh, in the Conference League, with Villa, Brentford, Crystal Palace and Nottingham Forest just missing out, really. Liverpool surviving. They did manage to sign a good amount of players in January, which definitely helped them secure their spot in the Premier League for next season. You can see it. It's really filled out here. But the three teams, I mean, United tried. You've got to give them credit. They tried. They were absolutely long gone by January, but they did decently well to get 30 points. But Manchester United did sign some players. Okay, they did actually improve their team. But it was a little bit too late as they have been relegated to the championship. And of course, Antonio Conte has also been sacked. <laughs> I mean, you switched him up. 
you stitched him up. Luton also getting relegated, unfortunately. And Everton as well getting relegated. It'll be interesting to see what actually happens. Graham Potter is now the manager after Sean Dyche had been sacked. It's interesting to see. I may sim another year and just see what sort of happens in the second season as well. Because why not? We're here. Jared Broward and Mo Salah tie for goals with Son getting one goal short. Jack Grealish getting 15 assists. This guy must have gone insane in the second half of the season. Dominguez of Brentford also getting 15 assists as well. And Sariba, Sariba, yeah, something like that, who did lead in the assist in January has now fallen to third. Raheem Sterling averaged 7.64 with 12 goals and 6 assists, getting the highest average rating in the league, passing Saka, who led in January with 10 goals, 12 assists. Not bad season. Now for the FA Cup, Tottenham beat Bournemouth in the FA Cup final, win they get trophy. They won a trophy. Bonanetti scoring a penalty and Dwight McNeil winning it. Hoyland actually signed for Bournemouth. Did we miss that? Did I miss that? Or did that happen in January? It might have happened in January. But Tottenham winning the FA Cup and Manchester City winning the Carabao Cup, beating Brighton in the final 2-1 as well. But they were up 2-2 in three minutes. I mean, if that was me, I would have been fuming. And also, if you're interested in the championship, Leeds winning it with 97 points, Leicester coming second, tied with Norwich and Southampton on 86 points. That's insane. With Bristol City winning the playoffs, beating Blackburn in the final by 1-0, and Josh Sargent scored 35 goals. <laughs> what? That is mental. And the Conference League was won by West Ham United, back-to-back -back for West Ham. With Reese Nelson and Declan Rice scoring. The Europa League was won by Leverkusen. Okay, that could happen in real life. Leverkusen winning with Victor Boniface scoring. And the Champions League was won by Real Madrid. Oh, cool. What's that, like 15 now? Oh, get a life. With Jude Bellingham scoring the winner in the final as they basically dominated PSG. But in terms of the... English performance in the Champions League. Arsenal lost in the round of 16 to Atletico Madrid, losing 2-1 on aggregate. Man City beat Salzburg in the round of 16. Newcastle lost to Napoli on penalties in the round of 16. And Manchester United finished last with no points in their group. Man City did get knocked out eventually by Inter in the quarterfinal. So now, I mean, I'm just going to sim again. I'm going to sim another year. Might as well have a little cheeky look uh, how Manchester United does in the championship um, and see if Arsenal can create a dynasty. Mikel Arteta's men. Also, Pep Guardiola has been sacked. Ben Wilkinson is the interim manager, but Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp are both sacked. But Pep Guardiola is looking to go to Bayern. Boring. We're going to sim to the start of August because there is the Euros. So we're going to have a look at the Euros as well, because why not? So France beat England in the final of the European Football Championship 2024. <laughs> Tell me, that is Gareth Southgate ball if I've ever fucking seen it in my entire life. They somehow made it to extra time, but look at that. That is a disgrace for a final. That is classic Gareth Southgate right there. He played Trent defensive mid. I mean, he kind of deserves it at this point. What is this team? What is going on here? He's playing Bellingham right wing. He's playing Trent defensive mid. He's playing Shalaba and Ben White center backs. I am lost for words. What is this guy doing? That's <laughs> absolutely dreadful. And then what's crazy is that England and France were actually in the same group. Belgium getting knocked out. I mean, this is so stupid. There's nothing more that I hate in the Euros than this. How many third place teams get through? Basically all of them except two. It is absolutely stupid. Basically no point playing the group stage. Look at that. Sucker top scorer, Bellingham second, and Harry Kane third. Jude Bellingham had an excellent tournament. But unfortunately, England, Gareth Southgate ball, mate. That's how it is. Too negative, too negative. All right, now we're going to sim to the end of next season and just see how it all happens. All right, so the Premier League has concluded and it looks to be more normal. <laughs> it looks to be more normal as Arsenal win the league again. Obviously, no surprise there. Erling Haaland getting the top scorer. But sort of the same team sort of there now with the Chelsea, the Liverpool, Manchester City. Newcastle obviously have a good base team with Mo Salah, etc. And Tottenham in the top six. Burnley look to be, and potentially Bournemouth, look to be sort of a European side. Not really any surprises, to be honest. Bristol City going down. Sheffield United going down. The newly promoted teams. Leeds finishing in mid-table. The championship was won by Manchester United, as you would expect. Everton as well coming in second. Southampton winning the playoffs. 
as they beat Luton 2-1 in the final. And Manchester United broke it for most league wins in a season and most points in a season. <laughs> Good on you guys. Good on you. I mean, they've still got the likes of Jack Grealish in the championship. <laughs> I mean, they've got Azpilicueta as well. This team is disgusting in the championship. Like, what? Ryan Mason is their manager as well. Wow. Okay, Ryan Mason going up in the world, huh? Fair enough. Manchester United manager. And Everton as well. Like, they've got fucking Kai Havertz and Cole Palmer in the championship. Like, Jesus Lord. I mean, that's fair, isn't it? The FA Cup was won by Chelsea, who won 2-1 in the final against Villa. What are these 2-1 wins in the finals? What is going on here? They turned it around late on with Saka and Kulosevsky winning the game. The Carabao Cup was won by Tottenham. Two trophies in two years for Tottenham. Mo Salah scored early, but they turned it around. John McGinn scoring the winner. And Ange Postacoglu is still the manager, so he's won two bloody trophies, mate. Oh, he's won three. Oh, they won the Community Shield as well. Oh, Tottenham. They're on fire. And the Conference League was won by Real Betis with Braga making the final. Europa League was won by Manchester City. That's not even fair. And the Champions League was won by PSG who beat Chelsea in the final. I mean, that is a low shot affair. Did we get anyone uh, knocked out of the group stage? Oh, it's a fucking league phase. Oh, God. Look how disgusting this is. Look how disgusting this is. I, I hate this. I absolutely despise this. I really do. Now, that's going to be it for this episode. The first ever FM experiment I've ever done. Let me know what you thought of it. And obviously, comment down below uh, if there's anything you'd like to see. I plan on doing some Wonder Kid stuff and just seeing what the fuck happens. Um, but if there's any ideas that you're interested in seeing, let me know. Obviously, like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. And obviously, sub as well if you're a good person. But that's going to be it for this episode. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll see you boys in potentially another one further down the line.